We'll be back. Stay with us straight ahead. Dr. Corsi is joining us. Well, Dr. Jerome Corsi is joining us. He is a, is it two-time or three-time number one New York Times bestseller? And he has the new book out, Always Definitive, Partners in Crime. If there's somebody writing the reality-based narrative in so many elections, it is Dr. Corsi. They fear this man as much as they probably fear somebody like Matt Drudge. Uh, and, and, and that's hard company to keep. I don't think any, there's probably anybody in that fraternity. Uh, but Jerome R. Corsi, Ph.D., really an expert on the economy. I want to ask him just selfishly, separately, about the Germans clearing the store shelves. Government says get ready for civil emergency. That was last Friday, got almost no coverage. That was a government announcement. Uh, what's happening with all these Soros emails coming out? Worse than I even thought about the UN taking over the Internet. Now it happens next month. Uh, I mean, it's like my worst concerns have now been, like, magnified and are happening. I, so I'm, I'm wondering from Dr. Corsi what he sees uh, coming up next. But Dr. Corsi is an expert on the economy. So we'll also get his take on that. In fact, going over his bio, he's a Ph.D. from Harvard in political science. He is currently a senior staff reporter at WorldNet Daily, where he works as an investigative reporter, WND.com. He's an expert on political violence and terrorism and worked in, as a consultant in a lot of clandestine areas. In 81, he received a top-secret clearance for the agency for international development, where he assisted in providing anti-terrorism training to embassy personnel. For 25 years, beginning in 81, he developed working and banks uh, throughout the United States and around the world to develop financial services marketing companies to assist banks in establishing broker-dealers and insurance subsidiaries to provide financial planning products. So he revolutionized that whole area and services, including working for Trump, I would add as a consultant, uh, to their retail customers. He is a noted financial services speaker. That's really where he's the most prestigious, not just as a writer. But obviously, the average listener doesn't know that because they're not into you know banking. And he's published uh, many, many books, many of them New York Times bestsellers, WND.com, Twitter.com forward slash Corsi underscore, or Jerome Corsi. Wow, where to begin? Obviously, the economy, his book, so many fronts, but the clips. I've already played them twice, so I won't play them again, or maybe later. Obama says a month ago, what's election fraud? The feds don't run elections. Well, we know they've been caught, the party in power, before directing voter news services and the media the way the announcements are supposed to go. But now Homeland Security and Jay Johnson are announcing special executive action to defend the infrastructure and come in and, quote, protect it. And as Roger Stone said a month ago, watch if Homeland Security comes in to protect the machines. That's the fix. It's like prophecy. It's happening. Uh, so this is simply over the top. And then I have Reuters from last week where the Organization of Economic Cooperative Development, that's really at the heart of globalism, from the Marshall Plan, it's OSCE, this multinational NATO Interpol group, is going to oversee with 10 times the people they had last time, 500 monitors, our election. So Obama's gone from the feds aren't involved to bringing foreigners in. I mean, this is so sensational with George Soros emails saying, have the UN run on local police, that it's like I'm a dog in a butcher shop. It proves everything. It's surreal, though. Dr. Corsi, I've thrown a big gestalt out there. Where do we begin? I mean, this is crazy. Well, I think you're, you're exposing the heart of the corruption that we're facing here, Alex. I mean, to begin with, there, you know, you don't have an unbiased source when you've got Department of Homeland Security coming in with Jay Johnson to supervise the elections. I mean, it's like saying the IRS is an unbiased source when it won't give out any 501c3s to conservative groups or that the Department of Justice is unbiased when it won't prosecute Hillary Clinton, even though it's clear that Hillary Clinton uh, is extremely careless with her uh, classified emails as Secretary of State. I mean, this bias of the corrupt Obama administration and the corrupt Clinton administration, I think, has got to be frightening. But, Alex, you've got the globalists scared to death of Donald Trump, and they're running as fast as they can to get to the finish line to put in global government and to eliminate fundamental freedoms Americans experience under the Constitution as fast as they can. Let me ask you this. Obviously, you've got a lot of really high-level contacts. When they have no fewer than 20 plus articles the last month in the economist the financial times of london the washington post the new york times the atlantic monthly all the globalist organs saying 
Globalism with Brexit is in deep trouble. If one more domino falls, if Hillary doesn't win, we're done. Red level panic, do anything, get her in. I, I mean, it seems like they're in a panic. Is that a put on or why are they acting suddenly so scared? Well, I think Alex, globalists are scared. I think finally people are waking up. I mean, you've done a tremendous job of getting the message well, out. Well, don't get me. You've done the job really documenting it for well, decades. It, look, it, it's it, we've all been fighting this battle to get the people of the United States and around the world to realize that one world government is enslavement. It's enslavement by the, you know, the, the transnational corporate structure and their power brokers in both the Democratic and Republican Party, you know, to force the United States into a European Union. You're also going to see tremendous articles and pressure about Obama panicking that he's not going to be able to get this trans -Pacific That's what they're trouble. saying. They admit TPP's in deep doo-doo. Deep trouble. And, you know, the, the, what the Brexit, I think, shows is that despite the elites, despite the Ryan, Paul, Paul Ryan and McConnell's, you know, with the charade of the Republican Party as a conservative party, which at its core it is not, they're, 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 they're worried to death that they're going to lose control over the populations which dare to vote against the Brexit. And we're seeing the same thing now, the drum roll, you know, the uh, Trump is going to lose, give up, don't vote. It's all over. Hillary's already won. I mean, Tokyo Rose stuff. Exactly. Precisely. All propaganda, all aimed at discouraging those of us who know that the populism that's building around the world is a pushback against the enslavement. The so let me ask you this then, as, as one of the architects of defeating this over 40 years, and as you told us, you know, no, Trump's for real. I've been talking to him for 40 years. He yes. knows everything we know and more. He's obviously anti-New World Order. It's why they're crapping their pants. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. I see them losing either way. If they steal it, they lose. Uh, authoritarianism won't prop this up in, in what's left of our open society. Their whole program relies on stealth as their own documents from BAMP Canada that you put out and others put out show. So what do they do? I mean, I don't want to be overconfident here, but it does seem that the tide has really shifted. The tables have turned. Well, I mean, I expect, I expect uh, you know, a massive violent kind of effort before this is over. I mean, there's going to be either a war, there'll be an assassination attempt, there'll be some, you know, thing to frighten the American people into thinking the only way we can survive as a nation is if we let the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Justice, and the IRS rule the nation. And they will rule it not for justice. They're going to rule it for the Clinton elite, for the Obama elite, for the elite in the uh, the GOP as well. Believe me, these the GOP and the Democratic Party are not two parties. They are two wings of the same party. And that's what Donald Trump, yes, Donald Trump is the real deal. I've known Donald Trump. I've talked to him. He truly does believe in America. I've been on the phone with you before when you had to get off like 10 years ago when Donald Trump was calling up. Like, yes, I gotta sir. go, Donald Trump's calling up. Right. So. <laughs> I remember that too. Yeah, that's right. I mean, well, you know, Donald Trump is a, uh, he's a really sincere guy. If you get to know Donald Trump, uh, as part of what gets him into trouble with the media. is That's he where he gets all this energy. He know, He's in the epic battle. He knows it. Uh, he, he told me, he said, use the energy. He goes, it's so good. I mean, he just loves it. Well, and in fact, he, he dares to say what is on his mind to say, whether it's politically correct or not. And look at the moves he's taking. He's going to go to Mexico. He's daring to now start calling out Hillary and Bill Clinton on the foundation. And I wrote this book because I think the foundation is the Achilles Let's talk about the book because you've been writing it over the last year. Now it's here. It's all coming out. The Chinese president, pay to play. I mean, this is incredible. If they don't, if somebody doesn't indict her, it seems like the sky's the limit because other people are going to involve in espionage and say, hey, you did nothing to Hillary. Well, and, and I wrote the book to point out that the crime here is not just pay to play, but it's enormous. Enormous is using a foundation for personal gain. And anyone who's contributed a dollar to the foundation can go to a state attorney general and at that state attorney general file a criminal complaint against the Clinton administration. And doesn't having, Trump have standing? Because he got bullied into giving money yeah. to him, too. Trump contributed. Trump has standing to go to the New York Attorney General. Good luck getting the New York Attorney General to pay any attention. That's the problem. Again, you've got Democratic Party politics wiring the situation. And if, a, and if an Attorney General in Texas starts doing the right thing, they indict him. Precisely. Or any state. 
any one state can close down the Clinton Foundation internationally because it can demand until their criminal investigation is finished that the foundation not function to defraud anybody else. And that's a key point. The, the, my book, Power, Partners in Crime, you know, showing how the Clintons have used the White House to enrich themselves, which they have. It's been their only job, and they have $100 million each net worth. It can be shut down by ordinary citizens demanding their state attorney generals investigate. And this so people should do it now, and, 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 and yes. no one loses who does it because it draws attention to it. What do you make then, and we're about to go to break and come back and answer this, we can start answering it. What do you make by the fact that they have all these other secret bank accounts in the foundation and they don't report out of Canada? I'm sure it's well more than $200 million. Oh, and, and also <clears throat> pass through accounts with Secret Shell Corporations, WJC. Because that's what you're an expert on is banking. So when we come back with Dr. Jerome Corsi, yes. we're going to talk about, look, if they brought in six, seven billion at the foundation and 69 billion in their global initiative, and I mean, we're not talking about $200 million here. These are people that stole George Washington's China. I mean, these are the white trash of the white trash. They are the creme de la creme. <laughs> they, they were brought into power by people that wore white pointy cheat head outfits. I mean, these people are jokes. We have, uh, obviously, David Knight hosting the fourth hour today, Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central. This is a short segment, long segment, coming up here in a moment. I'm having trouble describing how crazy all this has gotten. Uh, I mean, the, again, the new WikiLeaks, the new DC leaks, Hillary selling access to the Chinese president. I didn't even think of that. She is so amoral, she's just selling to anybody. It's all massive felonies. And Dr. Jerome Corsi is an expert, not just on the banking, but on the federal laws. His new book, Partners in Crime, is now on sale at Amazon, uh, you name it. Get it at bookstores. Very important, this book go to the very, very top. We're going to talk about the book more in the next segment. Uh, but continuing, Dr. Corsi, and folks can also follow you there on Twitter. We've got that up on screen for TV viewers. You were interrupted by the break getting into the, the types of crimes they're committing, uh, all these banking laws. I mean, I've talked to lawyers. If I set up some legal foreign shell corporation and try to put a little bit of money in there to avoid taxes, they'll probably come after me even though I'm following the law. It looks like the Clintons are just engaged in whatever they want. It's, it's wild. Hey, you're exactly right, Alex. And what they've done, the Clintons have also set up these shell corporations. They've got... WJC, which is a Bill Clinton's initials, WJC LLC and WJC Investments. And both of these two companies function to just pass money through. You, can't, you couldn't even tell where the money came from or where it's going, as these bank accounts are what money launderers and drug cartels, the Clintons are using the same vehicles for the Clinton Foundation. They're using classic money laundering strategies. Yes, classic. In fact, these would be it, these would be immediately suspect under any banking laws. Isn't this the red flag of red flags? Yes, it absolutely is. You don't have a former president operating a shell corporation in the pass through account. That's what money launderers do, what terrorists do. And then they've got money coming in through lookalike corporations. They have a Clinton Foundation in Canada. They've got a Clinton Foundation in Ireland. And often these are not even registered. I Good mean, the Lord. Clinton Foundation. The Clinton Foundation only got a determination letter initially to build the library. The Clinton Foundation decided that it was going to raise money for AIDS. It decided it was going to go into all these other structures. Uh, I can't see how the Clinton Global Initiative is a charity at all. You know, the money contributed to it, the philanthropy, gifts, and awards. These are very So here's rare. the bottom line. It's, it's one of the biggest criminal operations ever in our face. A, why do they think they can get away with it? B, will they? I mean, where does this go? Well, I think, you know, I first got onto this with Charles Ortel, who's a good friend and a, uh, one of the top financial analysts in, in New York on Wall Street. And Charles said to me, you've got to look at the financial, the audited financial statements filed with the Clinton Foundation because they're absolutely fraudulent. You know, they list gross sums, the amount of money that came into the, they don't say where it came from. They don't account for the speeches. We have no idea where the speech money was paid for. If you or I did this, we would be indicted within what, six months? Oh, it, 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 sooner. I mean, this is so patently obvious. Money disappears. The money that the, the United Nations in Geneva says they give to the Clintons for AIDS is different every year than the amount of money the Clintons report. 
I mean, the financials don't even reconcile. Why were they? Why are they so arrogant? What does it show about their brains that they would do? It is, these are the kind of financials that are criminal files. These are the financials that you use to hide money, just like a pass-through account is a giveaway that you're trying. That's how I caught. You know, I did the initial reporting on HSB. Rum Corsi. That is Rum Corsi, our guest. It'll be a jam packed fourth hour, obviously, with uh, David Knight today. Got a lot of news I want to cover with Dr. Corsi and some phone calls I want to take, obviously, with your questions for him. He's got the new book out, Partners in Crime. We're going to go right back to him in a moment. But I mean, I run a business that deals with credit cards and companies, and man, we've had all sorts of stuff going on over the years with the feds and investigations and banks and proving stuff. Like if we have some big sale of a new film, there's a bunch of money in the account. I got to go in and do all this stuff. And people actually come out and look at the DVDs and know it's real. And then meanwhile, I watch the Clintons with billions of dollars just do whatever they want. I'm very offended. I mean, talk about discrimination. These people do whatever they want, whenever they want. It's crazy. We're going to talk about that in a moment. I've got a whole list of questions I want to go over with Dr. Corsi. Before I go any further... You can see that InfoWars, along with WorldNet Daily and Drudge and other great patriots, are telling the truth. I mean, the Soros emails coming out.
Uh, it's available everywhere, and thank you. I very much appreciate it. Hey, we're all from Mexico. Trump set to meet in the next 30 minutes with the Mexican president, which I think is a great move. Uh, just like going to New Orleans was when Hillary wasn't. Alex in Mexico, you're on the air with Dr. Jerome Corsi. Go ahead. Uh, hello, guys. Good afternoon. Um, well, first, let me say really quick that uh, Soros-owned Mexican media is going absolutely nuts. And they're accusing the Mexican president of helping Donald Trump. So I would have to ask you, why would the Mexican government invite Donald Trump? I was about to say, Fox says you're not welcome here because he's a globalist selling Mexico out. Mexico's always been better than other Latin American countries about not selling its sovereignty. Under the NAU, it ends. And that's what I would be. I was, if I was Trump, I'd tell the Mexican people, hey, my country's mine, yours is yours. We can work together, but we're being conquered by globalists. That's a great point, uh, Dr. Corsi. Why did the Mexican president say two weeks ago, I would meet with Trump, and now Trump ran down there in a very honorable, respectful way? Well, I, I suspect that we better have double the security when Trump is down there. Oh, they admit the cartels are coming after him. Uh, and secondly, uh, I think that, you know, Donald Trump, the, the Mexican government may think they can embarrass Trump or that they can pull some stunt that will make Trump look bad. And I'm sure the, you know, the New York Times, which, by the way, is owned by Carlos Slim. Who runs okay. Mexico. Carlos Slim is in business with Soros. He's in business with the Clinton Foundation. Sure, but I mean, I mean maybe they are Trump, but maybe they're hedging their bets because they know he's the guy. No, I don't. I, I think the main plan is to embarrass Trump and ah. make him bad, have a narrative come out of this that they can. Oh, like he was hated in Mexico. Look at this pathetic pig. But everybody do. sees the courage to go down there. Well, and I think that's what. He's, he's walking into a trap. Trump is communicating beyond the media. That's what scares the media so, so much. The New York Times knows it's losing its impact. The Wall Street Journal even. Is losing, and that's him. why they're so scared of him. I was asking, that's why are they so scared of Trump? I've never seen anyone there. This they're fifty times more scared of him than anybody I've ever seen. Well, they've almost won. They've they've gotten they got you know Glenn Beck, Soros paid to get Glenn Beck, attack the advertisers, get him off. Sure, Beck rolled over. Pat Buchanan. I mean, it goes. The list goes on and on. They've gotten the conservative. Oh, they've told me oh, if I don't roll over, uh, it's over. And I just said pull the trigger. Uh, Fox. You know, I've, I have done a single thing, not one interview with this book on Fox. Fox is No, I know. That's how you know we're two minutes to midnight. They are shutting everything down, my friend. I, it's great to be here at the end with you being honorable, isn't it? Well, you know, look, Eric, I, I think, Alex, we're going to win. Because I just can't believe that, you know, this great nation is going to roll over and let these globalists steal our freedoms and enslave us. Fundamentally, the American people, I think, are out there and waking up. They're looking around. They're realizing they can't, you know, they're paycheck to paycheck and don't even know they're going to keep well, their look house. How, exactly. Trump. And look how presidential Trump is. I mean, this guy is, um, I got to say, he's amazing. Well, and Trump is seriously in going to, he has created jobs. Latinos look, African-Americans look. Trump has employed more African-Americans and more Latinos. He's done more for the minorities. This yeah, country. that's why Jesse Jackson, get, you know, gave him that award 20 years ago. That all the Democratic candidates put together. Hillary doesn't employ, you know, African Americans. She's not deploying Hispanics. Hillary, absolutely. Got, you know, Alex, have a quick comeback from Mexico with Dr. Corsi. Go ahead, quick comeback. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I was thinking uh, the Mexican government maybe sees the things for which they are, and they're not seeing Mr. Trump going second in the polls, and that is why maybe they invited him because they see Hillary going down in the polls. That's what I think, but Corsi usually has the inside baseball. This president has criticized him, but maybe he realizes what's going on. I mean, look, sovereignty's the way to go. Our countries aren't perfect, but you go with globalists. They will exploit you. They will screw you over. Thank you, Alex. I'm going to come back and take a few final calls from John in Mexico and JT Coat and others. Dr. Corsi's got to go. Partners in crime. we got 60 seconds left for you to finish, sir. Go ahead. Well, it's just been a great pleasure and honor to be with you again. I think the, you know, the whole purpose of Partners in Crime and the Clinton Foundation is to expose that these people are criminals and that the Soros gang, the Clinton gang, even the mainstream media, you know, will go to any length uh, to antagonize sponsors, to, to keep suppress the truth, to keep a conservative message out. They don't want the First Amendment. They don't want the Second Amendment. That's right. They're coming after our funding. So everybody fund us. Get the book. Buy stuff at InfoWarsStore.com. Spread the word. It's how you win the war in 21st century warfare. Thank you, Dr. Corsi.